if you're worried about your kids and your grandkids, then you better be worried about the future of the country. We've got a list of speakers and we've asked them all to keep their comments short. I'll start with Rick Blumendale. Rick is the uh, president of the Pennsylvania AFL-CIO. He's been a hard-working representative of working people. Before he was the president, he was the secretary of treasurer. And he's always been there on the front lines when we needed him or when any union needed him. It's my pleasure to introduce Rick Blumendale. Rick. Thank you, Leo. So, you know, usually I'm introducing Leo Gerard. So it's a, it's a great honor uh, to me that uh, I was introduced by Leo Gerard, and I appreciate the, the kind words. And you know, and I, I will be brief. I, we got a lot of work to do here today. Uh, Donald Trump, as you may know, is coming to town, and we got to make sure that the citizens of Pennsylvania, Southwest Pennsylvania, State of Pennsylvania, Ohio, where your media reaches into, we got to tell the truth about Donald Trump. This man has gotten away with so many, uh, I'll just say it, lies uh, every time they fact check it, and people don't seem to care uh, whether he's lying or not. They just want somebody who's like willing to poke a finger in Washington's eye. But there are key truths here. And one of the truths, one of the things I believe is I'm a person who believes in, uh, in actions speak louder than words. So look at a man's actions or a woman's actions before you make that choice. If you look at Trump's actions, and I always, what did you do before you were in the limelight? What did you do as a person? What was your character like? When Donald Trump had an opportunity to save American jobs or create American jobs, when he wasn't running for office, Donald Trump made every one of his products overseas, took advantage of low-wage workers. Look, I'm wearing an American-made suit today, made union-made suit today, union-made shirt. Now, I know you can buy American. I know you can buy union. But every time you look at Donald Trump's clothes, made in China, made in Malaysia, made in Bangladesh, everywhere he's taking advantage of low-wage workers, exploiting them so that he can have more, so that he can buy more gold paint to buy, put more stuff on buildings. Just look at what he did in Washington, D.C. at this new hotel. Trump towels, right? He said to the guy, oh, I gotta have Trump towels, you gotta make them all. And the guy makes the Trump towels, he says, I don't like them, I'm only gonna pay you 50 cents on a dollar. Now, he says that's tough negotiations. I say it's dishonesty. That's lying. He made a contract with that guy. He told that guy, you make me towels, I'm going to make you pay you this much money. And instead, he cheated that guy. He's done the same on contractors, union contractors in Atlantic City. Just ask the building trades in Atlantic City. They're small contractors who can't afford to sue. Donald Trump has them do the work. And then he says, oh, I don't like the work, so I'm not going to pay you. So they have to negotiate for cents on the dollars. Many of them have gone out of business. And with them, the workers that they hired. This man is a cheat. Look at what he does when he wasn't in the public limelight. He cheated workers. He cheated small businesses. He took advantage of people's need to work. This is not a man who's right for America. This is not a man who's right for Pennsylvania. On the other hand, you look at somebody who does things in the, without the media, without things uh, following her around all the time. Hillary Clinton stands for workers. Every single day of her life, whether the limelight was on her or not, she was fighting for workers and their families. Health care for kids. On 9-11, no cameras around. She was down helping folks come off the lines, getting them water, doing the, the things that we do when we volunteer. That's what Hillary Clinton's about about helping workers whether there's a limelight or not. Donald Trump, even when there was the limelight, he could have brought that production back to America. Hell, he could have gone to Gitman Brothers and Ashland, PA, make union-made shirts. He could have said, I want you to make, although they probably shouldn't, he would have cheated him, said, I don't like them, I can only get paid 50 cents on a dollar. But he could have brought that production back to the U.S., but he didn't. So remember when you vote, actions speak louder than words. Look at a person's actions, look at what they've done when the limelight wasn't on them, and then make your decision. And I know your decision will be for Clinton, 
and came for President of the United States. Thank you very, very much. And remember, America works best when we say you can best. I'm not sure I'm going to pronounce this right. Nina Esposito. This Gettys? <laughs> Nina is uh, from the Teachers Union. And Nina, you're the Thank you so much. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I am so proud to be the president of the Pittsburgh Federation of Teachers, who represents 3,000, over 3,000 educators in the city schools. Every one of those educators care about the future of their children. They know that all of our kids deserve and want a quality public school education so they grow up to be engaged and active citizens. But you know what? Donald Trump doesn't care, seem to care about public education. He's not a product of public education. His own kids certainly aren't a product of public education. He has done nothing to help us strengthen our schools. And forgive me if I refer to my note, but there are so many um, statistics I hear, have here that sicken me, and I'm sure they'll sicken you too. It's not surprising that his so-called education plan would decimate education for the 90% of American children who attend our public schools. His $20 billion proposal to voucherize public education would harm 10 children for every one child he says it will help. He plans cuts on all Title I funding for low-income students and cuts an additional $5 billion in federal education funding. His plan robs, and I mean robs, 5 million public school students with disabilities and 5 million English language learners of essential education services and supports. 8 million of our students would lose their Pell Grants, which allows them to go to college. That's why they can go to college, eight million. Students across the country would lose tens of thousands of qualified teachers and paraprofessionals. Our class sizes would be enormous, enormous. Students would not get individualized attention. As a teacher, I gotta tell you, and you can see I'm pretty passionate about it, Donald Trump gets an F in his educational policy. He failed. privatization over what our kids need, and I think that is shameful. Our students deserve better than what Donald Trump is offering them, and I sure know you agree. Hillary Clinton, on the other hand, knows that, and her education plan invests in universal pre-K, strong public schools with high academic standards, and our beloved community schools that we're fighting so hard for. Hillary Clinton will fight for our kids, and we intend to fight for her. Thank you so much. Next, Sam Williamson from SEIU, 32 BJ. Sam, where are you? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. It's great to see you all this morning. Uh, so proud to be here on behalf of 155,000 janitors, food service workers, and security officers all up and down the East Coast. I want to begin by stating something which ought by now to be obvious. Donald Trump is a liar. And the fundamental problem with Donald Trump is that he is lying about what he thinks about working people, he is lying about what he thinks about the economy, and he is lying about how he will deliver for our communities. Right now, in Las Vegas, workers at Trump's casino on the Strip District make $3 an hour less than their counterparts up and down the Las Vegas Strip. So those workers organized. They decided they were going to do something about it, and they voted to join a union. And now they are having to hold monthly protests at that casino in order to get Donald Trump and his management team to negotiate with them. That's right. The master negotiator, part of the deal, won't negotiate with his workers who he's underpaying today in America. So Trump's coming to Pittsburgh today. And we're going to tell him that Pittsburgh is no place for Donald Trump. We're going to tell him Pittsburgh is no place for Donald Trump because Pittsburghers remember our history. We remember that good jobs in the mills and the mines weren't the gifts of benevolent bosses. They weren't bestowed upon us by some demagogue either. People a lot like us fought for them. 
And all across America today, people a lot like us are standing up to fight for the communities and the economy that we deserve. Fast food workers and airport workers, casino workers and hospital workers, all across America are standing up to build a real 21st century movement for good jobs and a family-friendly economy. Raising the minimum wage, real paid family leave, support for collective bargaining, fighting against right to work, these are all of the things that Donald Trump stands against, but which Hillary Clinton stands for and will fight for along with us when we make her the next president of the United States. So that's why today in Pittsburgh and in Pennsylvania and across America, we continue the hard work of sending Donald Trump packing so he can go back to his his pretty palaces with his pompadour haircut and get back to being the petty rich man that he always has been because we know he's not on our side. He's not on the side of Pittsburgh workers. He's not on the side of American workers. Thank you. I want to introduce a few people who are here that uh, aren't probably going to speak. First and foremost, uh, it's unusual for Jack Shea to say, look, there's enough speakers, don't ask me, I'm okay, just, just introduce me. Jack Shea's here from the Central Our Vice President for Administration, who does lots of our heavy-duty bargaining, Tom Conway. And the husband of Kim Miller, one of the greatest activists in our union, sitting back there somewhere, there she is. And the guy who got out of jail, I think, Dan Miller. <laughs> and so, somewhere in the crowd, I, Senator Jay Costa. Jay's going to say a few words, Jay. Yeah, thanks, Dale. Thank you very much, President Gerard, and I'm very honored to be here today, standing with so many of my good friends in labor, but also all of you to talk about some of the issues uh, that are very, very important to all of us, particularly if we're in a situation where we have Donald Trump as our president. When we look around in this Commonwealth, around this country, when you ask folks what are the issues that are important to them, there's a couple of issues that always percolate to the top of every poll that you conduct. It's about jobs and making certain folks have a future, particularly kids and grandchildren. It's about making investments in education. And as we know, we've heard from the previous speakers, Donald Trump's future is not one that's going to be able to support us along those lines. Just look at this sign. Trump's plan loses 3.5 million jobs. The number one issue to Pennsylvanians. That's not me saying that. That's not Leo or Rick or, or uh, Jack or anybody else. These are the ec economists who look and evaluate future economic plans for this country and make those determinations, contrasting that with a Hillary Clinton plan that grows nearly 10 million jobs in this Commonwealth and in this country. That's what it's about, and economic investments. And as Leo said, this is probably the most historical election we're going to have that we've had in many, many years. And when you look at what's stake, the loss of jobs, the lack of investments in education, and in Pennsylvania we've seen that firsthand with the impact of not making the investments in education. And we're fortunate to have a governor who's trying to reverse that trend, and we've had success along those lines, and we'll continue to be successful along those lines. But when you look what else is at stake, issues along the environment, issues along in health care, we have the Affordable Care Act in Pennsylvania. We now have 600,000 folks, working men and women, who have access to health care. Those are the type of things that are at stake that we stand to lose. And last but not least, we have a situation with our Pennsylvania, U.S. Supreme Court, where we'll have many opportunities to put folks on the court. Do you want a person who has a mindset, who is dangerous and divisive and anti-labor, as that sign indicates, and Donald Trump making appointments to our Supreme Court? That's not where I want to be. That's not where we should be. We all have our work to do to be able to make certain that we deliver a Clinton, Kane, presidency and administration. Because if we don't in Pennsylvania, we've got many, many challenges ahead of us, far worse than what we can ever imagine. Thank you for being here. Thank you for doing the work you all want to do. Thank you, President Trump. Next is uh, someone who's on the Steelworker staff, but is also a member now of County Council. A uh, really good friend, DeWitt Walton. I used to call him my spare house, DeWitt. It is with extreme, extreme pleasure and respect that I'm standing here today. Rick, I want to say 
I have a, I have on a Gitman's brother shirt, Union Made and Made in Pennsylvania. All right. Yeah. Um, so, but I want to start by saying this. Um, Jay Costa talked about Supreme Court choices. Donald Trump has said on a consistent basis that he would appoint a Supreme Court justice in the mold of Antonio Scalia. Think about it, how dangerous that is for all of us. As a legislator, we just passed in Allegheny County minority women and disadvantaged business enterprise legislation a week ago to ensure that small minority women and disadvantaged businesses had an opportunity to, to grow capacity, to uh, learn to become better businessmen, and ultimately uh, disqualify themselves in the program. A Supreme Court justice like Scalia would say, would say that's unconstitutional. Think about it. As an African American, in 1965, there was a, 19, there was a Voting Rights Act passed that said there are disparities in voting. And in order to change voting rules, you had to have pre-clearance by, uh, by any state that was initially covered by that legislation. Alabama, just last year, changed the rules without pre-clearance. And it was, it's been challenged, and the, and, and the Supreme Court upheld it. But just last week, Two, no, three weeks ago, North Carolina's voter rights legislation was overturned by the Supreme Court because it was, it was demonstrated that it was designed specifically to discourage and exclude specific voters in specific areas. We need to have a president that is going to be progressive, that is going to have a Supreme Court justice that is reflecting of the views of America. And last but not least, Donald Trump, Donald Trump is running around to black churches, talking to, and, and everywhere he can, asking black folk, what do you have to lose by voting for me? I ask myself, what? Is he a fool? Everything. Everything that I've worked for, everything that my dad, my mom, my grandfathers worked for all their lives to give me a chance to be successful, to create an opportunity for my children, grandchildren, my friends, to have an opportunity to have a decent working class life. Hey man, it doesn't get, it ain't rocket science, it's based back. If you want to keep what you got, we can't have that. We have to encourage our brothers, our sisters, our friends. The choices are clear and stark. Either we do what's right and what's good for America now, or we all will have nothing. And last but not least, think about what happens to the National Labor Relations Act, our last line of defense. As tough as it is, as tough as it is out here for organized labor today, if we don't have the NLRB, man, we'll all be eating fish heads and rice. Thank you. As I said, uh, when I would travel around with DeWitt, I'd introduce him as my spare host. And now I see John Fetterman and he and DeWitt together to be a duplex. <laughs> introduce the mayor of Braddock, John Fetterman. John. Everybody, this is August. He's Hillary Clinton's cutest supporter, I would say. Uh, he's a little shy. Um, but he's also one of the three biggest reasons why uh, we have to stop Donald Trump, you know, my children. Um, what can you say about Donald Trump? You know, during my campaign, I said, I've never met a greedy union member. You know, they just want part of the American dream. They just want an extra car in the garage. They just want to be able to take a vacation during the summer. They want to be able to send their children to school. And if you hold it dear, Donald Trump threatens it, no matter what that is, whether that's Supreme Court, whether it's labor's right to organize. 
there is no choice in this election. I mean, you get right down to it. There is no choice in this election. And during when I when I ran uh, for the Senate, um, you know, almost a year ago, my campaign, you know, what sums up Donald Trump? What sums him up? Um, and uh, my campaign released a one statement press release. Donald Trump is a jag off. You know? <laughs> The best part is, is that we sold Trump as a jag off on union made shirts um, as part of my campaign, you know, made here in America. You know, there's nothing new to be said about Donald Trump. You can't really criticize on his plan because he doesn't have a plan. You know, we don't have a choice in this election. We must do everything that we can to elect Hillary Clinton and, and Tim Kaine and Katie McGinty as well, too. Because if we don't take control of the Senate, Again, we risk having appointments to the Supreme Court that could be devastating for the next 20 or 30 years. So it's an honor to be here, to speak here, as the only mayor in America that's lucky enough to live across the street from a steel mill and a union hall. It's an honor to be here in this, in this sacred building talking about one of the most sacred duties that we will have in our lifetimes, and that's to defeat Donald Trump in this election. Thank you very much. said there's a clipboard over there for by the security guard he would sign up to do some phone banking and now I see our vice president of human affairs here there he is Fred Redmond Fred raise your hand <laughs> I want to say a few things that uh, there's a uh, famous American author Maya Angelou who some of you may have heard of who said at one time, when someone shows you who they are, accept it and believe it. And based on that, I'm asking all of you to look at who Donald Trump is. Ask yourself, has he ever done anything for working people? Has he ever stood up for the kinds of things we believe in? I can't think of anything can't think of anything. He stiffed his workers by using bankruptcy as a business model. He stiffed the small contractors the way that Jay and people talked about. Why would we put our future and the future of our kids and grandkids in his hands? You look at Hillary Clinton and I want to ask you this. What's the scandal that they keep talking about where Hillary can't be trusted? There is none. They've all been made up crises. And if you look at her life, when she got out of law school near the top of her class, she could have gone to any law firm in the country and made all kinds of money. What did she do? She went to work for the Children's Defense Fund and she went door to door knocking to see if people who had disabled kids were actually getting a good chance to get an education. And then she spent her whole life fighting for workers, working families, and kids. There's 11 million kids in this country that have health care because she fought for the CHIPS program. When she was the first lady, she spent years developing a national health care program that would have worked. But in the end, the Republicans sabotaged it. I was so annoyed, and I can tell you, I'm not a media basher, but I've been so annoyed at watching the way the media treats Trump as if he was some kind of celebrity, and they treat Hillary as if she has to meet a standard that he doesn't have to meet. You want to talk about transparency? Donald Trump is the first person in the last 40 years that ran for president who won't declare and make his taxes, his tax, re, uh, tax report uh, public. Why not? Why not? Is that more important than saying that Hillary was not transparent because she didn't tell them that she had a bad cold that turned to pneumonia? You know, I had the same thing. It lasted three weeks. The only thing is I didn't have to phone the media and tell them I was sick. You know, that's craziness. 
And so we need to make sure that we talk about the real issues. Donald Trump said the minimum wage is too high. I would like to see his little kid, well, he's not a little kid anymore, I'd like to see that kid go out on the town and live on $7.25 an hour for a month and come back and see what he tells daddy with the silver spoon in his mouth. Yeah. Trump said he's a hundred percent for national right to work for less. Totally trying to gut the labor movement. He said if we're going to have to compete with China, we have to lower our wages. Our wages are too high. This isn't me making this stuff up. You see some of the reporters now, too few of them that are digging into Trump's history and background. He wanted to attack the Clinton Foundation. And the media were making a big deal about transparency. Ask yourself, what has the Clinton Foundation done? They've saved millions of people's lives by bringing clean water and health care and anti-AIDS anti education to destitute countries. They've saved lives. They've identified every contribution and every expenditure in their report. What has Donald Trump done? The Trump Foundation, he hasn't put a dime in it since 2009. One of the things he did with the Trump Foundation he used that money to buy himself a six-foot tall portrait of himself. As President Obama said, at least he was courteous enough not to buy the ten-foot version. <laughs> he gave a donation of $25,000 to the candidate for Attorney General in Florida on the verge of her filing a complaint on him on Trump University. Did that out of his foundation paid a $2,500 fine, used his foundation to pay off a legal bill, settled a legal claim by taking money out of his foundation and using it to pay, pay that. Where's that transparency? We need to make sure that we understand not only is it good that you're in this hall today, not only is it hopeful that you're going to sign up for some phone banking. Not only is it good that we're asking you to go out and vote. But you need to do more than you need to do more than vote. You got to go talk to your friends and neighbors, your colleagues at work, and you got to use the truth. If we use the truth about Trump and the truth about Hillary, we win. The truth about Katie McGinty versus the truth about Toomey. Toomey is nothing but a Wall Street crony who would do anything that they ask him to do and do absolutely nothing for us. I've never seen him once come and say to me or anyone else, you guys are under attack by Chinese steel, what can I do to help? I can tell you this, on a very personal experience, when Hillary Clinton was senator for New York, and we had issues, not just issues in New York, but issues on trade and issues on other things. Not once did I go and ask her to help that she said no on that. In fact, she was always willing to come and testify at any hearings we had. We never had a word from Donald Trump. And to plug one of our videos that our media department, New Media, had done, called Who's Fooling Who? Our union went into one of the high-end Trump hotels, I don't know how much it is, maybe 600 bucks a night or something. And we took pictures of everything in the hotel and where it was made. The nightstand, the lamps, the, what do you call sound bar, the radio, the dresser, the Trump robes, they all were gold-plated. Everything in there that we could find. Even the Holy Bible was printed offshore. Almost everything except the pot and a lid for the pot. We couldn't find where that was made. 
This is a guy who says, I'm going to bring your jobs back. This is a guy who has never, ever, ever brought a job back to America. He could have easily said, when he announced that he was running, he could have easily said to all of his buyers that buy his stuff for his joints, find it made in America. At the end of that video that we did, we identify everything that he did in that hotel. We also say that every product could have been made in America. And look, let's be really honest about this. We have a lot of our members and our friends and our family who have been fooled by some of this rhetoric, who actually believe that he's going to do something for them. And I would bring it back to how I started. Judge him by how he showed us who he is. Challenge him to show us what he's ever done for workers but make life hard for them. The future, and this is for real, the future lies in the hands of the labor movement at this time. We need to find every bit of energy we can, every spare moment we can, to work to win this election. I'm going to give you one scenario, then I'm going to sit down. Close your eyes. Think about waking up or not going to sleep because you're staying up all night to watch. And on the morning of the 9th, Donald Trump is president. Mitch McConnell's still majority leader in the Senate because we didn't kick enough of them out. We didn't take back the House and we didn't turn around enough state houses. Imagine now. Not only will your life be, what will the life be for our kids and grandkids? Because what a number of speakers said, he gets to appoint the Supreme Court. And the Supreme Court, when Anton Scalia was there and they had a 5-4 vote, we lost every pro-worker vote that came to them. He's not going to appoint a 70-year-old Supreme Court justice if he wins. He's going to appoint right-wing, almost unbearable right-wingers. He's going to appoint them in their early 40s or late 40s or early 50s, and he'll sit there for 30 years. So your kid who's 10 years old today will be 40, and they'll still be controlling the court. That is scary to me. Hopefully it's scary enough to you that you'll get out and work hard. Let me close by saying this. We can win this election if we do the work that it takes to get our allies to the polls. If we get them to the polls, we win. If we don't get them to the polls, who knows? Thank you very much. Please sign up.